a ball hitter. He started off with a double. Bottom of the sixth inning, Jason Worth, another guy, free agent. Charlie made him, hit him into a regular player, 3-2 at that time. Then the bottom of the seventh inning, here's the question again. Who got the game-winning, series-winning hit to end this drought? Pedro Feliz. Then, top of the ninth inning, couple outs, runner on second base, and Brad Lidge uh, made it interesting, I guess. We had a little bit of fun here watching it as well. 0-1, 0-2 against Eric Hinsky. Finally, strike three just before 10 o'clock tonight, October 29th, 2008. The Phillies are the World Series champions. Everyone has to look down or look up at the Phillies as we got the chopper on the field, and now starts the champagne celebration drinks are on everybody literally and figuratively jim outdoors and indoors enjoy it is a celebration here tonight and we go back now to huntington valley the family party that erin o'hearn has been telling us about now for a couple of days she was there monday night when everything had to come to an end in the middle of the sixth inning. And now, Aaron, it is done. It did. It came to an end on Monday, but everything worked out okay. Everyone here is a believer, right, guys? They all said that the Phillies were going to take it tonight. There was just a minor glitch in the run for the championship. And I have to tell you, Jim, this is one of the most lighter crowds I have ever seen. And they with the 1980 World Series game, they said it's been too long since they've had a championship. And tonight, October 29th, finally the night when Philadelphia broke the curse, right? Yeah! I think they're waiting to open a bottle of champagne. But in the meanwhile, I know you've been waiting, right? What did you think? Did you think they were going to pull it out? Yeah. Yeah, you knew it, right? Yeah. And I know you, you came home from college to see it. Yeah, twice. Twice in one game Gosh. I came home. The curse of Billy Penn is finally over. Finally. There we go. Number one, baby. Number one. Party worth doing it twice, worth all the nerves and all the fingernail biting tonight. It was an awesome time here. I was very lucky to be with this family a minute. Bring it back to you, Jim, because I know there's a lot of celebrations around the city of Philadelphia. Thank you, Aaron. We're going to go quickly now to Dan Cuellar, who is overlooking Frankfurt and Cotman. Dan, a lot of people already out. This victory, 25 years of bottled up emotion, now pouring through the floodgates of Mayfair. Jubilant crowds who had poured into area sports pubs and other places have now rushed onto the streets to make this, mark this historic occasion, the world champion Philadelphia Phillies. Earlier today, city crews had greased down utility poles, trees, and even a, a sports little uh, office there to make sure that the revelers didn't try to climb up any of those areas. Police and riot gear are also on hand, as they were here on Monday, to try and keep things from getting out of hand. They have as many as 500 officers on standby, ready to pour in if necessary. I see right now that there are a few fireworks that are going off in the area, making some smoke, but nothing to be concerned about. It's just a happy moment here. It's a chilly night, but it doesn't seem to be having any impact on these fans, fueled by euphoria and maybe a few other things, Jim. It was a party that was put on hold since Monday when the game was suspended due to the rain. We might as well have pushed the pause button on the remote because it's the same story, second verse. Philadelphia finally has broken the curse which kept a major sports franchise from winning a world championship for 25 years. And so you can understand the emotion being shown here tonight. Long gone is the drought. Long gone the also familiar theme. Maybe next year or the next. That year has come and it is here. Philadelphia, your time has come. Let the good times roll. And they are rolling at Cotman and Frankfurt, that's for sure. Hey, everybody, just be careful of those fireworks. They can hurt if they go off in the wrong place at the wrong time. Please be careful. Let's go live to 
the area outside Citizens Bank Park. Action News reporter David Henry is there. David, I can see some of the fans are beginning to stream out, but a lot of them are staying inside. Uh, Jim, I can barely hear you. There's pandemonium out here. As we take a look back at the left field gate here, uh, we had uh, kind of a reverse commute going on. As soon as the uh, Phillies won the World Series, they opened up the gates, and all the people that were watching on the outside rushed in to join the celebration. Now they are starting to spill out onto the plaza outside the left field gate. And uh, as we look over this crowd, you can see fireworks uh, being shot off over the uh, parking lot and down in neighborhoods of South Philadelphia. Uh, it's been a huge outpouring here. You can imagine all that pent-up emotion, people waiting so long for this very moment. And here they are outside the left field gate right now. And if we take a look down here to the right, you can see all the way up and down the street here outside the stadium. The celebration has begun, uh, and we expect this to go on for quite a long time this evening. The uh, stadium staff has told me that they've been put on notice to be here uh, up until 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. They said they're going to open up the stadium. Anybody can come and go as you please. They have no idea how long this celebration will last, but they are expecting at least to be in the early hours of the morning. Now, I also talked to the police here. They have hundreds of officers down on the field and they've got a huge security contingent outside the stadium. Uh, they, they've been arresting people. There have been some people getting out of hand already. Uh, but for the most part, it is just an exuberant crowd hugging, screaming, uh, just jumping for joy. And you can imagine the emotion these folks are feeling right now after sitting through that long, rainy day on Monday and just hoping against hope that the Phillies could finish it off tonight. And they've done that. And this is the result, this exuberance, this natural outpouring that you're seeing outside here now. I was here in 1980. I was part of that crowd then. I know what it feels like, and I know what these folks are feeling right now. It is just extreme joy and exuberance, and uh, we're just hoping they remain well-behaved. And, uh, you know, we just keep our fingers crossed and hope that this is just a happy, joyous family celebration for everyone. Live here at the park, I'm David Henry, Channel 6 Action News. Jim? Thank you, David. I didn't interrupt you, but we are looking at quite a picture as members of the Philadelphia Phillies, as we can see high above the stadium from Chopper 6, although we are zoomed in a lot, are running around the circumference of the field with a 2008 World Championship banner. They are proclaiming their victory and their new status as the latest champions in Philadelphia and 45,000 people are transfixed watching this scene with members of the Phillies and the media chasing that banner. That's what they did when they won the National League East pennant, of course, and they beat the Brewers, they beat the Dodgers, and when they celebrate, they, they get in the clubhouse for a little bit, and they just can't contain themselves. They did it last year, they're doing it again this year. They want to go outside, they want to share this with the people that they love, that is the fans. They, they, they sit amongst themselves for a while and come on out and take that victory lap, of course, and now we can all exhale. It's over. We can celebrate. It's way beyond baseball, way beyond South Philadelphia. It's truly a celebration of everybody Throughout the area, after so many years, if you follow the Phillies intently or just a little bit, you are feeling the pleasure of these young men who are focused on one thing. And boy, they were not to be de denied this year. Is it, does that look like Ryan Howard with the 2008 banner? I can't quite see exactly. He can't plants tell, it. But he, he plants it in the turf <laughs> at Citizens so Bank Park. This is ours. He proclaims that they are the champions of the world. It's, it's like, over, Jim. It's like planting a, a flag, flag on, on the moon. The moon. <laughs> the you know, moon, it's, you know moon, what's interesting the to me? The moon was easier. You know what's interesting to yeah. me? Here you have these players, all right, most of whom uh, have no real understanding of what the city of Philadelphia has gone through over the past 25 years and, and obviously more acutely more recently as, as mm -hmm. the years of the curse have built up. And these are guys, many of whom are passing through, uh, they're in their early 20s, but I think a lot of them have over the past weeks and months gained a real appreciation that Phillies fans were so emotionally invested in this run for a World Series title. And I think that it, it, may, be, it may be a little idealistic to think that some of these players were doing it 
for the city, hey, they're doing it for themselves and they're doing it for their teammates. But I think they have come to understand that Philadelphia fans are special, are unique, and that this was truly important. And they know how much everyone cares about them. And they, they know it when they're doing badly. They, they feel the wrath of the fans in so many different ways. And they've commented about that. But one thing they know, they know that they are loved. And they are loved because they have brought us such joy such unadulterated, beautiful joy. Talk about perspective. I remember talking to Cole Hamels a few years ago, and I said, you know, Cole, when was the last time the city celebrated a championship? He looked at me and said, 1983. I was born in December of 1983, and I said, that's when I bought this suit in 1983, which is probably <laughs> true. But it, 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 it is, it, they understand more than ever that how much these people and all of us care about them and the fact that it's been for so long makes it so much more appreciated. The drought is over. We can drink deep tonight in so many ways as they get to celebrate amongst themselves, amongst the players, but way beyond that. That's why they can't stay in that clubhouse. They're going to come out and enjoy it with everybody as we see throughout the Delaware Valley, the Lehigh Valley, anybody out there that can hear us is, is, is ecstatic tonight with what's going on. And you're looking at an image of ecstasy. This is Broad and Porter in South Philadelphia, not far from Citizens Bank Park. And at Citizens Bank Park, of course, is our Keith Russell, who joins us now live from the ballpark. Keith, can you tell us just a bit about what it's like, what's happening exactly inside the grandstands of the ballpark? All right, we're still waiting for Keith. We will be back to him just shortly. So let's, if we can, take... Unless I lived in the area of Cotman and Frankfurt. Not bad at all. Not a bad place no. to be. And uh, Dan Cuellar is there. Dan, describe it for us. We easily have a crowd of 5,000 fans out here at Frankfurt. And Cotman, can you hear me? Because it is so loud. It feels like I'm at Mardi Gras. Heck, I think this is even better than Mardi Gras. This town is crazed tonight. There's just so much emotion out here on the streets. It's as if they, they were on the field playing that game themselves. Listen to this crowd. We're looking at Mayfair on the right, and now that is Main Street in Maniunk on the left. The crowds are gathering all over the city of Philadelphia, in different neighborhoods in Philadelphia, and dare I say it, in different kinds of neighborhoods in Philadelphia, and it just is a good example of how all the patchwork quilts that make up this city, sports is such an identifier. It brings people together, and it has done just that tonight. We are all Philadelphians, whether you live in the city, whether you live in Dover, Delaware, whether you live in Haddonfield, New Jersey, whether you live in Allentown, Pennsylvania, we are all Philadelphians tonight as we celebrate in Maniunk, in Mayfair, and outside Citizens Bank Park, where David Henry is covering things for us. David? Well, Jim, we're out here right outside the stadium, and you can see the crowd is now starting to filter out. They stayed in there for all the post-game ceremonies, but now they are coming out of the stadium, out here in the streets, having a ball, expressing this unbridled joy and enthusiasm they've had all <laughs> week long. It's all coming to a head right now. And uh, if we just swing over this way, you can see that they're all heading out to the parking lot now, coming out of the left field gate. But obviously, wherever there's a camera, they're drawn to it like moths to a flame. They just want the world to know how excited and uh, full of happiness they are out of what happened here. So uh, this is the scene outside the park right now as the crowd empties out. It's just going to get more and more crowded out here as the uh, uh, time goes on here over the next uh, hour or so. And uh, we'll just keep an eye on things and tell you how it's going. Jim, back to you. There doesn't seem to be any urgency to get into your car. And oh, you can't overstate it enough. Thank you, Keith Russell. I love the words of J.C. Romero. Four words. We did it. Enjoy. J.C. Romero, given up by the Boston Red Sox last year, 
And now he's picked up by the Phillies last year, and he's the setup guy extraordinaire for Brad Lidge, and he did it again tonight. And what's happening in Center City tonight, Jim Gardner? Well, we're just looking at what is becoming an extraordinary situation here in Philadelphia. This is Broad Street, just south of City Hall. And as best as I can tell, we've got thousands of people in the streets just wanting to be together and celebrate this victory here tonight. It, it, it's an impromptu parade. In 83, I was down there for the Sixers, and everyone just sort of wandered out, and we, where are you going to do? Are you going to sit at home? No. We're going to go outside and, and just talk to people and love the moment and have an impromptu parade. The parade, what, scheduled maybe for Friday or whatever? No, the parade's right now at 1032 on Broad Street. Why not? Well, on Broad Street in Mayfair, in South Philadelphia, in Maniunk, my point was that this this impromptu ad hoc celebration is now taking place all over the city of Philadelphia. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, I don't know if we can get the helicopter over there in West Philadelphia, maybe around University City or in uh, some of the residential neighborhoods. Uh, we can check that out. This is Mayfair on the right of your screen. That is Broad Street on the left of your screen. It's not just happening in one central location in the city. It's happening in five, six, seven different locations. It really is extraordinary. It's, it's, it really is extraordinary. It is the exaltation, I guess that's the word, of just holding your breath for 25 years. And you're thinking it might not be the time uh, is it noon on Fridays? Did you get that official word? What, the parade. Go ahead. The parade will kick off from 20th and JFK at 12 noon on Friday, and it will come down to Broad Street. We're going to show you a map of the parade route. There we start at 20th and Market. I'm sorry, down on Broad Street, and guess where it all ends? Right, Citizens Bank Park, and it starts at 12 noon and we should tell you that channel six and action news will be covering it every block of the way with pleasure and uh with frankly pleasure. we can't oh. wait um my understanding is that i'm sorry i'm talking i'm listening to my producer now all right well keith russell is very i need you to do something for me what do you got jim give me your best harry callus Impression. Way on out of here. You want to do some highlights? No, I want to go to Keith Russell. Oh, and Harry oh, Callis. Oh, 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 you got Harry Callis? <laughs> you got my man Harry Callis? I got Harry Callis. You got Callis. my man Harry? And, and, and Harry, right now, no one has gone out of here. No, nobody at all. That's the that's the loyalty and the passion of the Philadelphia fans. They have been so supportive all year. Here they are, still here an hour after the game, and still enjoying the celebration. And yeah, we had to wait 48 hours, but it hasn't dampened the spirits of our wonderful fans. Pat, Pat Burrow, Pat Burrow, real quick, we're live, man. What's it feel like? What's it feel like? That was Pat Burrow. Obviously, it feels like nothing. So we're, <laughs> we're back to Harry. Pat had a mission. He was out of there. This team had a mission. Yes. How can you describe where this team ended up as opposed to where it started? This team was truly the epitome of the word team. I mean, when... Key players like Jay Roll and Ryan Howard struggled. Others picked them up. Pat Burrell, Jay Sutley, Shane Victorino. Up and down the lineup. Look at tonight. Look at the World Championship game. Pedro Feliz knocks in the winning run. Jeff Jenkins gets a pinch hit double to lead off an inning. So it was really a team effort where everybody contributed. And our bullpen was the best in all of baseball. And they showed that again tonight. Brad Lidge was perfect. I mean, he, how can a reliever be perfect? He was. Harry, in your time of covering and broadcasting for the Philadelphia Phillies, where does this team rank? This team ranks right up there near the top, right there with the 80 club. And, of course, the 93 club was a fun punch, too. Harry, give us one last <coughs> out of here, man. Give us one last out of here for the fans who have waited so long and so patiently. All right, for the Tampa Bay Rays, you are like a 3-1 pitch to Ryan Howard. You are now on a long drive. You're out of here. <laughs> Headed back to St. Petersburg with nothing to show. Meantime, we have plenty to show. We'll keep it coming live from Citizens Bank Park. Music to our ears. Here we are. What do we got? Have we got from Models? These uh, are the official yes, World Series. from Models, yes. Okay. What do, course, you got? what do you got there? Cecily's here as well. What do you got, Sess? 
You got a hat here? It looks very, very chic. I like it. You got it. the shirt? I like Dry it. forecast for the parade on Friday, too. Oh, good. Gotta get that Please. in. Please. <laughs> no rain. What you do you think? You were the most valuable person in this World Series, the weather forecast. <laughs> That's right. That's these, true. these are magnificent. Look at this. Funny. Can we get a tight shot of this one right here? It's nice stuff. Oh, they are nice. And we will wear it proudly. Is this for us? I hope so. It says Nobody will Jim Garner. Right? No, it doesn't. <laughs> I got a big head. <laughs> I got a big head. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> fans will be wearing this. Fans will be wearing this stuff proudly for uh, the next... Uh, Oh, 50 years. A year or two. Yeah, Dick. So we went another one. Dick Sporting Goods as well as supplying some of this. Oh, uh, Dick Sporting Goods as well. Thank you very much okay. for coming on down. Appreciate it very much. Good. Do we want to do uh, a little uh, forecast? Weather forecast? I'm even as we that. even as we look at Broad Street and uh, all the revelers that are still uh, Who's going to do it? You going to join themselves? Do it. How much time do I have? I can do it. Yeah, Jim, you do it. <laughs> yeah, Go why ahead, don't we Sassy. throw up the currents? We have the currents that I called up a little bit earlier. They're working on it. Well, it was a cold night. It was a little bit on the windy side, but hey, it wasn't pouring rain. 38, nine degrees right now in Philadelphia. Humidity, 64%. Barometer, 30.10 and rising. Winds out of the west at 12 miles an hour. So the wind chill is 32 degrees. It's cold out there. It doesn't look like anybody really minds right now. In Philadelphia right now, it's 39 degrees. Trenton, 37. Allentown, 32. Wilmington, 40. The Poconos, 28 degrees. Still have a little bit of a breeze. So the wind chill right now makes it feel like 27 in Allentown. Wilmington, 35. The Poconos, 21 and Trenton 33 degrees. Satellite 6 along with Action Radar showing the system that brought us the heavy rain Monday night, the snow in the Poconos. It's finally lifting away from us. We did have a few scattered showers here and there, but you can see that the clouds are beginning to erode and this means huge change for the next two days. High pressure is building in. That storm system moves away from us. That means winds instead of out of the northwest pulling down the cool air out of the southwest and that means we've got a nice warm up for the next two days. The Gulf Mackey weather, no rain on our parade. Friday should be beautiful. For the morning rush hour, a lot of folks will be tired, maybe a little bit hungover. Weather should be okay though, mostly sunny, breezy and chilly. 30 in the suburbs, 36 for Center City and the exclusive AccuWeather Friday forecast. Sunny, breezy for your Thursday, 52 degrees. Friday, beautiful for Halloween, 60 the high, perfect weather for our parade and the weather will continue to be beautiful right into the weekend. Saturday, breezy and mild, 62. We have a cold front moving through late on Saturday. Bring us a little bit of cloud cover. Cool us off a tad on Sunday. Sunshine, 56. Monday, sun and clouds, 56 degrees. Now